Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look at the Unified Cloud Gateway. I believe this is the Ultra or Max or something. Uh, I'll link it. I'll put it on the screen. I don't even know at this point. Um, they have so many different models. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at this new Ubiquiti router. I just got it in today. It's got the 512 gigabytes of storage option and it runs Unified Protect, Unify Network, etc. Really quick, if you're curious, if you're looking to purchase this product, the one reason, I guess the biggest reason that it's different from a bunch of the other Ubiquiti routers is because this one specifically has a built-in controller. It has a built-in um, router and a built-in switch. A lot of the other Ubiquiti routers like the UXG Lite, those only do routing and I guess switching as well, but though they don't have a built-in controller with the device. So with this, you get the full controller for Unify Network, you get a controller for Unify Protect, and I believe you might get Unify Connect as well, but don't quote me on that. Um, so yeah, that is kind of, this is a more well-rounded product in the fact that you get multiple features out of this, multiple applications is what they call it, that it can run, it can do more than a lot of the more basic routers. Uh, I believe this thing was like $279 or something like that. Um, so it's not too bad um, for what it does. You can get more storage, less storage, and there's a no storage option for $199. Uh, it's also a great option. You can add your own storage with the $17 M.2 tray um, that you can purchase from Ubiquiti's website. So this tutorial is going to be for the setup of the device. So this is geared towards people who may be a more of a basic person when it comes to networking and not know exactly much about the uh, Ubiquiti ecosystem. Um, I'm going to kind of walk you through the process start to finish today um, and hopefully give you some pointers along the way. So might be a little bit of a longer video and split into multiple parts um we'll see but without further ado i'll stop talking and we'll get started so the first thing you'll see is in the box you get all of this stuff right here you get the power adapter the actual router and the power cable as well as a nice little ether lighting cable this is just a standard uh cat 6 patch cord or cat 6a i think it's cat 6 but either way you really can use this if you want or you don't have to it doesn't matter um for the purposes of networking so the next thing is we're going to take the wrapping off of all of these power cords to make sure it is all ready to go, as well as take the safety connector off of this power pl plug here. That way everything is freed and ready to go. Then you're going to plug the power cable into the power adapter, and you'll plug this into your wall somewhere wherever you have a power source, just like so. And we'll run this cable over here so it's kind of out of the way. Um, before we plug this in though, I do want to kind of walk you through the process for getting the internet connected to this device. For me at least, I have my ISP that gives me an ethernet connection and that comes from my ISP's modem. Um, this is going to be different for everybody of course, but for me, I just know it comes from the modem and I plug an ethernet cable in to the WAN connection on this router. So if I set my phone down here. So if you don't know what the WAN connection is, the WAN connection right here is the one with the blue um, icon on it. I can show you on this camera as well. It's the one right there with the blue icon on it and that is going to get the firewall features kind of working and it's going to securely route your internet and that's the correct way to do that. And this cable is going to function as my internet connection. This cable is going to look different for everybody, but this is what I'm going to plug into my ISP provided modem. Now that we have the WAN connection plugged in, we're going to plug in the power for the device to the power connector here. And you'll see on the LCD screen on the front, you'll see it starts to turn on and it will show uh, kind of a booting icon, I think, just the Ubiquiti logo, as you can see right there. You can see the logo on there. That shows that it's booting, just like so. And now the video might look a little bit different. I'm going to switch my phone to the screen recording. And we're actually going to set this up through the Unify app on my phone. Um, this is kind of a newer thing that Ubiquiti started doing, but it's really nice. Uh, it's, it simplifies a lot of things, and it makes it so much easier for you to set up. So I'm going to grab this, and we'll proceed with the setup on the phone. Okay, so now that we have moved over to the phone here, you are going to want to search on your app store for the Ubiquiti app. It looks kind of like this. Um, it's just the Unify app for their Unify network. So if we scroll over here to my homepage, you'll find that we do have the Unify app. I'm going to open this. I'm going to have to kind of blur up my screen here just because I have some other sites on here. Um, and you'll see up in the top right hand corner, you'll see a plus sign. You're going to click the plus sign and it's going to find nearby Ubiquiti devices that are ready to set up. So the device that is already on here is one that I actually already have set up. So we're not going to be setting that up in this video. I'm not sure why it's showing up, but um, you'll want to wait for your router to boot all the way. You'll see the progress bar at the bottom of the screen on the LCD screen. You'll see it's still booting. Um, bigger routers that have bigger screens will show you an ETA on when the boot will be completed. Um, as well as some of their networks, which is also show in ETA, but that doesn't matter for the purposes of this video. Just wait for your router to boot up and then we'll continue with the setup on the app. All right, so you'll see after clicking the plus sign on the app, you'll see the Cloud Gateway Max appear for setup. You're gonna click tap to setup. It's going to connect to the device over Bluetooth. 
as long as your phone is nearby the device it will connect to it and you'll be able to set this up on the app all right so now we get to name the cloud gateway max i'm going to name this beam networks here so let me type in the name and analytics improvements you can turn that on and that's going to share analytics and improvements to ubiquity to help them improve their products i'm not going to do that in this video uh, it's generally kind of something you don't do for security reasons for companies usually but um, ubiquity is usually pretty secure so as you can see it's going to run an internet speed test so i'm getting about 900 megabits per second both directions and you'll see it shows your isp right here your latency your location ip address and your download and upload speed that's actually a really good speed test for my isp right there we'll click on next here it's going to set up unify os and it says about 35 seconds left. So what this means is that after setup, you'll be able to go on your computer or laptop, phone, whatever. You can go to unify.ui.com and you'll be able to manage your router entirely online. Um, I would actually recommend that over their app. There's more features online. Although they are quickly improving their app, there's a lot of features available online. So we're gonna click go to dashboard. So it says it's updating firmware. Updating process can be running in background. It's applying firmware. It says about five minutes remaining. So it says, feel free to minimize the app. You'll be notified when the update completes. So I'm going to select the X in the top right hand corner. And you'll see on my Unify app that the Beam Networks UCG Max is showing up at the top of the screen. You can actually click on it. And that's what's going to connect you to the device. So although the update is going, it looks like it's not rebooted yet, which means we can see some information on the device. I can walk you through the app. So on this main dashboard screen here, this is what you'll see when you open up the Unify app. You'll see your Cloud Gateway Max at the top, its IP address, speed test, topology, and teleport, your ISP health, internet activity, once it shows, and your active Wi-Fi channels. So let me kind of walk you through this. Internet speed test is going to run an internet speed test, and it's going to tell you your internet speeds. The topology is a great way for you to see kind of the path your internet takes to get to the internet, um, but that's only starting with your ISP. You can't see beyond that. Teleport is a VPN solution from Ubiquity. That means you can VPN remotely into your router, your home network, so you can access your NAS or your local servers and stuff at your house remotely um, from wherever you are. If you click on see all next to ISP health, you'll actually be able to see a lot more information about your ISP. It's WAN IP address, upload capacity, download capacity, location, service provider. If you go over to insights, when your UCG is not updating, you actually see a bunch of helpful information here with the insights that shows your ping latency and your speed test um, results over time. Your UCG can actually automatically run a speed test nightly if you want, and it will actually graph it for you very nicely to ensure you're getting the correct speeds from your ISP that they promised you. Now I'm going to click on the device icon here. It's the second one in the bottom left. You'll see that I'm disconnected. You'll see the loading screen right there. Not just because it's updating, but we'll still be able to see enough information for now. If you click on that, you'll see a bunch of info about here about the cloud gateway. So the ports show up here. These are all of your five different ethernet ports. And you can actually click on configure for any of them and switch the network they are assigned to. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see the IP address of your UCG, MAC address, device version, network, uptime, memory usage, load average, just like you'd see on like Linux kind of. If you click on port list, you'll actually see your WAN ports and your LAN ports that breaks it down for you. And if you click on WAN or networks, you'll see more information about your WAN connection right here uh, that shows you your live activity and your usage or networks down there. It's kind of hard to click on. That shows you your actual usage on each individual network. If you click on insights right here, it's the next tab over. It will load a chart of your CPU usage. It'll show your memory down here and your live CPU usage. If you click on settings right here, there's the option to name the device. Um, I think once the uh, cloud gateway is reconnected, you'll be able to see more info here. Um, but for now, we're going to go over to clients. There's no clients connected because I've not connected a device through Ethernet yet. So you won't see any clients appear here yet. If you go to insights, you'll actually see some more info kind of on your internet connection, your networks, your ports, that kind of stuff. So primary WAN 1 is connected already to the internet. Secondary WAN 2 looks like we can assign this to a certain port on our UCG to get a second internet connection option. So actually up the top of my screen, you'll see Beam Networks has updated to Unify OS 4.0.6, which means this device has automatically updated to the new firmware. Selecting ports over here actually gives us a breakdown similar to what we saw earlier of each port and what they do. I'm actually going to go back to devices down here. Click on Cloud Gateway Max. Looks like it's getting ready now uh, after the update. This is kind of the post update screen right here. I would recommend waiting till it's gotten ready and then you can view the settings on it. We'll be right back once it connects. All right, so we're back now. If we click on settings, there's actually no more settings here. They must move them. Uh, we'll click on settings here in the bottom right. 
So you'll see a lot more settings. This is very similar to how the website works on unified.ui.com. You'll click on Wi-Fi to create Wi-Fi networks, networks to create wired networks, multicast settings, uh, allows you to set MDNS and IGMP snooping settings, um, just like on any other router. Uh, I would recommend leaving these settings on default unless you have to change them. Uh, they don't break anything. They could break things, uh, but typically uh, it's just better for these kinds of things if you just leave them on the default settings. So I'm not gonna walk you through all the advanced settings since you're probably a beginner if you're watching this video. Uh, one thing you may want to know though is under OS settings, this is how you're going to do updates. So you're gonna click on applications and on this screen is where you'll see updates. So it looks like auto update is turned on by default. Unify OS is turned on, applications on. It says daily at 3 a.m. it's going to update. And actually right here shows you all of the five applications you can run on this cloud gateway. You can run protect, which is for their security cameras, access for door access and door control, talk for phones, connect for digital signage and displays, inner space for mapping out your floor plan and for just visualizing all of your unified devices together. So this actually does a lot more than I thought it was, which is really cool. If we click on release channel, uh, by the way, if you select that, you'll see we have official release candidate and early access. This is only if you're an early access member of Ubiquity will you get these options and that's how you switch to your early access firmware. I would recommend not running this uh, if you're just a home user because sometimes it does get a little buggy and you can't really fix it unless you know what you're doing. So that's about all for this video. If you click on internet right here, you'll see we have our primary source of our 2.5 gigabit E internet connection right here. Uh, if we click on automatic speed test, we're gonna turn that on. So it's going to daily at 5, 10 a.m. run a speed test. And finally, if we click on primary WAN one, you can manually set your ISP settings if your ISP tells you to. If they don't tell you to do this, do not select these settings. Um, there's a lot of things you can change here, a lot of things you can do. You can use a VLAN, MAC address, clone, smart cues, etc. Smart cues are super helpful. Your ISP won't tell you this, but um, the smart cues are very helpful to kind of conserve your internet speeds. It actually balances it between devices and lowers the speeds of um, like longer connection times. Uh, it kind of lowers those if a device is hogging the internet, it slows that one down, lets other people access the internet. So that's kind of a breakdown here. It's probably a long video actually of the UCG max this device is really solid um looks really nice i'm excited to start using this this is going to be for my testing environment so with that being said if you have any questions leave a comment down below i'm super happy to help um, i do my best to respond to comments as quickly as i possibly can so that's about all for this video ubiquity is an amazing company i really do enjoy the products um, they've improved a lot over the past few years i actually just saw a flashback in my photos from three years ago their dashboard looked entirely different. It was a lot worse than it is now. So I'm really pleased to see that Ubiquiti is making great progress and it does look like it's still a growing company. So I have no problems uh, with purchasing their devices and using them in my home lab, in my data center, at uh, my grandparents' network. I don't know. Um, possibilities are really endless, um, especially, since they can, can, especially since they continually add features all the time. So. That's about all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, please leave a comment down below if you have questions. I will see you guys in the next video.